everyone, it's Brandy from Brush by Brandy, and this week we are working on a set of nightstands made by Bassett. And these are kind of cool because I've actually done this set before. And every time I see them, I see them in an almost industrial look because they've got a delineated drawer that looks like a linear filing cabinet. So I took the cues from that and I went ahead and did these in that same look, only I changed it up a little bit. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, the paint that we used this week, and we're going to use the silk line from Dixie Bell Paint. So Silk is a new line of paint from Dixie Belle. It just came out um, to the US this month. And it's an all-in-one mineral paint that comes in 20 different colors. So these are some of the shades that you'll see in the Silk line. They're very Hampton-inspired, beachy tones, a lot of the light blues, whites, and grays in this line. So some very refreshing colors. But the color I actually chose this week is called Hampton Olive, which is this here. And then I chose to highlight it using a color called black sands, which is a deep charcoal gray. So you can see how those coordinate together. And I use this just for a little bit of shading. So one thing you're going to hear about the silk line is it's not the most blendable paint. It's not the best paint for blending, but Dixie Belle doesn't need the best paint for blending because we already have it in our chalk mineral line. So when you're looking for a paint that's going to be the strongest blender, go for the Dixie Belle chalk mineral line. But when you're looking for a paint that's going to give you a smooth, clean, even texture, um, even finish, then go ahead and choose the silk line. That's where it really shines, is, is doing clean, smooth finishes really well. So that's what we did this week, only I chose to grunge up my silk a little bit and give it an almost industrial feel by working these two colors together. So while it might not be totally blendable, you can do multicolored finishes with silk. Um, you can use it for stenciling, you can use it for um, with the patina line, with dark waxes. There's a million different ways that you can accent the silk paint. Just because it does smooth, even clean finishes doesn't mean they have to be plain. So let's go ahead and get started on our finish this week. Let's get these nightstands done and show you how to work some silk paint together. Because I knew I wanted to give this set an almost industrial feel, I knew I wanted to replace the hardware. So I started out by filling my hardware holes with Dixie Mud and sanding them smooth. Then I'm going to go ahead and clean my drawers with my white lightning cleaner. After I rinsed away all my cleaning residue with water, I went ahead and scuff sanded the front of my piece using my Surf Prep Rad Pads. This is a recommended step with your silk paint just to take the sheen off of your existing finish. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, work on our project that I'm working on with the Silk Paint line from Dixie Belle. So Silk is a new paint from Dixie Belle, and it's completely different than the Dixie Belle paint that we're used to working with. So when you're applying Silk, I've prepped my piece by cleaning well, I scuff sanded my surface, and then I went ahead and cleaned that off with a rinse of water. Um, you wanna apply your Silk paint with a synthetic bristle brush. Um, this is not a paint you want to use with a natural bristle brush. So that's your difference right there. I'm going to use a quality synthetic bristle brush. is going to give you the smoothest finish possible. I'm starting with a dry brush, so no water. This is not a paint that you want to use water with. And then I do fill my brush a little bit heavier than I would with the chalk mineral paint from Dixie Belle. And I'm just going to brush with long, even brush strokes from side to side. So going all the way across the front of my drawer here. It's great coverage. This is my first coat. I'm going to go ahead and get the edges of my drawer here. All the way across. If I start and stop in the middle, it's going to leave me some streakiness. And then this paint can self-level and give me the beautiful smooth finish that Silk is going to be known for. This paint is going to be ideal for doing kitchen cabinets, bathroom cabinets. It has UV resistance, so you can use it on outdoor projects. If you want to redo your patio furniture, it's going to be great for that. It has mold and mildew resistance and grease resistance, so you could use it in kitchens and bathrooms. Really friendly. So I brushed all the way from side to side my good quality synthetic bristle brush. I'm going to let this dry for um, about for one to two hours, and then I can come back and add a second coat over the top of this. Sanding in between your coats is completely optional. Um, you can decide if you want to do that. Getting the top of my drawer here, and that'll give me a nice, clean, even coat on that. Okay, my first coat is completely dry. We're going to come back and add a second coat on top of this. So sanding, I said, is completely optional. I'm just going to take the Dixie Belle sanding sponge, and I just feel a, a few little spots in here that I think could be smoother. So I'm just going to take my sanding sponge and do a single pass over the top. And then I'm just going to use a damp rag to tack off my dust with. So I'm not painting over that dust I just created. 
And now when I feel that with my hand, I can feel that it's ever so slightly smoother than it was before. And same thing, I'm gonna repeat the same process. I've got my dry natural bristle brush. I went ahead and stored this in a Ziploc baggie knowing that I needed to come back and do my second coat. I'm gonna fill my brush. I do fill it a little bit more than I fill my um, chalk mineral paint with. And I'm gonna repeat the same process going all the way across the front of my piece. The paint just glides onto itself. It goes on really smoothly. With a lot of paints with this makeup, a lot of competing brands, you cannot brush back through the paint. This actually gives you a good probably five minutes of working time that you can work with the paint before you need to stop brushing through it. So you do have a little bit of workability in this paint that's not common um, with competing brands. And I'm gonna get here up on the lip of my drawer, make sure I get inside these grooves here. And then I'm gonna walk away and let this dry. And I'll come back tomorrow and we're gonna add some decorative finishes on top of this paint. With my two coats of silk nice and dry as a base, I'm gonna go ahead and come back and we're gonna grunge this up using a contrasting color of the silk paint itself. For this look, I am going to use the Dixie Belle French Tip Brush, which is a natural bristle brush. And I did recommend that you use synthetic bristles to lay on the silk paint for a smooth finish. But because I want a little bit of texture and irregularity in this portion, I'm going to go ahead and embrace my natural bristle brush. So I chose silk in black sands, which is a nice, rich charcoal gray color. And I think this is going to be a great color for shading. I see myself using this a lot. And I went ahead and swirled it just onto the drawer edges. Now I'm going to come back with a little bit of my Hampton Olive, which is my base color, and I'm just using the moisture of the paint on the bristles of my brush, and I'm going to swirl those two colors of paint together. You'll notice here that I'm not using any water. The moisture from the paint itself is what's going to make these two work into each other. If my brush starts feeling a little bit sticky as I'm working them together, I can add a little bit more paint onto the tips of my bristles and keep working them. I also want to add a little bit of my black sands into the crevices of these drawers and that's just so it looks like there's a shadowing effect in between the drawers themselves. So while I won't call silk a blendable paint and that's just because it doesn't react the same way to water as the chalk mineral line does, you can definitely work two colors into each other for different kinds of shaded looks like this one. You can see how that little bit of a contrasting color just added a little bit of shading and shadowing around the edges of this drawer. Knowing up front that I wanted to do kind of an industrial look, I love these labeled bin pulls. I went ahead and ordered these on Amazon. They are available in my Amazon shop, and I did order extra because I really like these, and I have the matching dresser for this set so that I can use these again. Because I had already filled my hardware holes in the beginning, they no longer exist under my paint finish. So now I need to go ahead and drill new holes for my hardware. I'm going to go ahead and measure on my drawer front using a tape measure for center. Once I found the center point on my drawers, I measured the hole spacing on my hardware and then I drilled pilot holes for the screws. I really love these poles, but they really came with terrible screws. I had to use a tiny little eye eyeglass screwdriver and I even had a couple where the screw heads popped off and so I had to go ahead and purchase some new screws at the hardware store. So just be aware they aren't the greatest quality screws. I cut up some lined 3x5 note cards and placed that paper inside all of my poles. Because all of my drawers are out to get their hardware on, I went ahead and added my Big Mama's Butta. I always condition my wood drawer boxes so the wood is nice and refreshed when it goes home. I feel like this step is just part of maintaining vintage furniture. It's so easy to forget that wood dries out and the insides need to be maintained as well. For the final step on this look, I'm going to go ahead and darken up some of my crevices using Dixie Belle Besting Wax in black. I'm just going to use a thin natural bristle artist brush. I have some sets of these in my Amazon shop as well. And I'm going to go ahead and ride this crevice, adding some black into it. You can see how it just darkens it and adds some contrast up against that black sands paint and emphasizes the shading on this piece. I'm going to repeat this process using a slightly thicker natural bristle artist brush and just add a little bit of black wax to the corners of the drawers. I think this just emphasizes the shaded look that I'm going for by giving me another layer of color on this piece. You'll notice I'm putting the black wax just at the very outer edges of the corners, and this is just where they would have caught some finger dirt over time and it would have gathered and looked aged. 
When I'm shading with waxes, I like to use a nice firm wax. So I have a tin of vesting wax that I've let dry out a little bit over time. And I use this particular one for shading. I'm gonna add the same little bit of darkness in between the lines of the drawers. Um, and then I'm gonna come back and wipe it back off with a rag. This just softens the look and smooths it inside those lines. Another thing I wanna point out is that I am applying my dark waxes over my silk paint and it's unsealed paint. So the silk takes dark waxes really nicely and it's slightly more wipeable than the matte finish of the chalk mineral paint. And so you can apply your dark waxes without sealing the paint first. Silk dries to a really nice, almost eggshell finish, and I really loved the soft matte look on these nightstands, so I chose to not seal them afterwards. Because silk is an all-in-one mineral paint, it has a built-in top coat. It's not required to be sealed, so it's going to wear really well. Do you guys want to do a scratch test on these? I just finished these nightstands yesterday, and I'm taking them over to my storage, but I wanted to show you guys. So this is a new paint finish. This is all silk, not sealed at all. You can see the low sheen on it. I'm scratching it with my finger now. It doesn't, it doesn't budge. There's not a single mark in these. And you know, even I'm flexing my fingernail in there. It's not gonna scratch. So if the paint is on there, that paint is on there. All right, here's our finished look. These really have come a long way. They were 1980s dated oak, and now they are fabulous. I feel like this paint is really simple and user-friendly, and this is a look that just about anybody could duplicate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com.